Welcome to the crafting ant. I had to become a carpenter for my carpenter ants. Our Beasley, the Campanotus Vagus Queen, is pumping out tons of workers. So it's time for an update. Not only for her, but also for me. Some Campanotus species like living in wood. In the wild, it would be old or rotten wood. But moisture can be a problem in setups. That is why we are making something out of hardwood. Since I'm designing a full series of nests that will work and fit together, I made a standard first. These will fit wood, white tongue and later gypsum. It's called the flex nest and it will be in the sizes small, medium and large. For the wood, I chose Maranti because of its nice brown color. Make sure that your wood is dried well and made out of one piece. A lot of wood nowadays is laminated. It's more strips glued together and the glue is bad for the ants. I made the decision to buy a CNC router, but I could not wait to make something. So I drew a nest on wood, drilled a couple of holes in it and then used a Dremel to make it into one piece. But this took a long time. I am happy with the result though. After a few days the CNC arrived. It was a construction kit and it took me about two hours to build. If you want to see more of this build there's a link in the description. Time to router a nest on it. I made the drawing in Tinkercad and exported it as a 2D file. It can be loaded into the CNC software. For size I went for the medium since Beasley is not in the founding stage anymore. The nest is set up that it can also be routed in white tongue with an added water section. The machine does the opposite of a 3D printer. It takes wood away layer by layer. The bit in the machine turns at 10,000 RPM. The machine makes a lot of dust. This will be a challenge when I'll be doing white tongue. Before using the wood in a nest, be sure to let it breathe for a day. Milled wood can smell weird because of some gases that are inside. Ants also won't like that. Let's put together a medium flex nest. So it has four parts. The nest, plexiglass, the cover and the wood or white on. And there it is, the first flex nest. To connect the old setup to the new, we needed a new corridor and some connectors. The connectors have one old and one new side. And because the ants have to regulate the humidity in the nest, they need water nearby. So I made a vertical tube as a prototype. Are you ready to see one of my worst disasters? I thought everything was quiet in the nest. But as soon as I took the old nest off, I saw that there were 20 workers in the connector to the outworld and they escaped. Sadly, there were two casualties. I managed to get the new nest on real quick. Then the old nest. Now it's time to catch the escapees. Some managed to evade me for about two hours. After everything settled down, they started exploring. I was not sure what to expect, so I set up the camera, 
so that I could record for several hours. And this happened after 20 minutes. And now the queen was thinking, go, don't go. Should I stay here? I like it here. Should I go back? Or... No. Mom, let's go. Okay, okay. After the queen was in the nest, the other ants started bringing in the brood right away. Let's speed it up a bit. The cool thing is, I never would have thought that they would be so happy with the new nest. Everything was moved within 45 minutes of connecting. We could easily disconnect the nest after. Place a blind and secure it with a bolt. Let's take a look at the new nest. This is after about an hour. This is two hours later. About a week later, they are fully settled in. On the left side, they have some food. In the middle, they have their eggs and larvae. And under there are the cocoons. There's still quite a couple in the outworld. The queen likes to reside in that corner where she is now. Let's talk about the vertical tube. Not all the ants are very happy with it. They keep falling down. So I might need to redesign it. Thank you for watching. If you want to help us, like, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And see you next week at the Crafting Ant.